Hey, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Doc, and welcome to another edition of Doc TV. It is April 28th. First, I got to give a shout-out to my dad. Happy birthday. Uh, also, my mom, too, because I haven't done the video in a while, so my mom's birthday was April 8th, so happy birthday to my mom. Happy birthday to the homie, Ra. His birthday was April 13th. And then, happy birthday to my homie, Crew. His birthday was April 16th, so that's all they be they, uh, at my birthday, too, April 2nd, so they... Aries and the Taurus, you know, shout out to all of us, the month of the diamonds, so that's what it is, but, um, anywho, um, doing this video right now for Doc TV. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a lot of stuff in this video in 10 minutes, so, you know, it's, y'all going to be in for a good ride on this video, and I told y'all I was going to do another video, so, yeah, I told y'all, um, first I got to start with Gabrielle Sidibe, she hosted SNL on Saturday night, on oh, Saturday Night Live, for those I don't know, yo, I'm telling you, I was truly impressed by Gabrielle Sidibe, like, she really did her thing, she really, her comedic timing was great, you know, of course, you know, it was, it's live, so, I mean, you, you saw her messing up a few times, not really messing up, but, you know, probably just shaky, nervous about the whole situation, but she really held her own, she really did her thing, like, when she played the nurse, that was funny, because of the Jamaican accent, another thing is, the, um, the, the skit, the cherry, um, what is it called, the cherry bomb or something, it was the cherry skit, though, with her and Adam Sandberg, it was so crazy, I don't know why I was, I put on Twitter, like, I was, like, why am I, you know, fascinated with this whole situation, like, it was so crazy, though, like, how the whole cherry thing, I like that effect, too, like, from a visual standpoint, I really like that effect, so, shout out to whoever directed that and everything, but, um, edited it and all that good stuff, but, Gabrielle, she really did her thing, you know, the, oh, and she can, she got a nice little singer voice, too, you know, and, all the skits were just funny. I People were saying she wasn't funny. They saying, oh, when she played the girl from the DMV at, in St. Louis, that was so crazy, too. That was funny because it's, it's, it's true things. And people were like, uh, she's trying to, you know, she's playing into the stereotypes how black people are sometimes and everything like that. And for me, I don't know about you, but for me, like, when I see a stereotype or something that's portrayed to a black person, I laugh about it because it's funny. Like, cause it's true. So you can't be mad about it if it's a true thing. So I just laugh like chicken and watermelon. I laugh at it because black people do like chicken and watermelon. It, you know, it's like Italians. They like pasta. You, you know, it's a stereotype, but it's funny. And, you know, especially with the Jersey Shore thing now that they get tans and GTL and all that, it's funny because it's true. That's what fits you. So, you know, you can't be mad about it. And if you're mad about it, do something about it. You know, stop eating chicken and watermelon then. <laughs> But, yeah, so Gabrielle said the she really did the thing. That's kind of like a TV run now, so, you know, get in tune, people. Brandy and Ray J Family Business. Now, I like that show, and I don't know if I like it just because I've been a fan of Brandy for, like, forever and a day, but that show, like, that's my new addiction. Like, Sunday nights are my new addictions on VH1. Um, Brandy and Ray J, um, this week was when Ray J was getting ready to start working with um, Dark Child, Rodney Jerkins. Brandy you know, gave some insight into the whole situation that her and Rodney are not that cool and that she did not like to work on Human, her last album which came out. Now, for those that don't know, Rodney and Brandy started working together back in Never Say Never days, like, and that was, at that time, like, Crazy Banana Successful. And then they worked together on Full Moon, which was one of, the, one of Brandy's best albums. Like, Full Moon, hands down, from start to finish, is a great album. And then you got after, with, then something happened in between that time I'm going to talk about it this Friday on the radio show, so y'all tune in for FNL Radio. I'm going to get in-depth on tour into what I've been hearing. But anyways, that's when um like they had some type of, you know, drift or whatever, some type of, you know, situation. And then she started working with Timbaland, and that's when the whole Aphrodisiac album came about. And Aphrodisiac is a hot album, too, like, hands down, hot. Her and um, Rodney patch things up, then they get back to working together on Human, and then, you know... Now, I guess, you know, they don't have, they're not seeing eye to eye again, so therefore, she's back to working with Timberland again, so, you know, it's a little trending pattern right there, but I never knew that they still had bad blood, like, I knew about the beef from back in the day, from like a few years ago, but I didn't know it was still something going on, and I didn't know she didn't like to work on human, because when she was on, like, 106 and Park and doing interviews and everything, she was saying, oh, I love the work that me and Tim, I mean, that me and Rodney did, you know, we back and everything and this and that. And the album has a light sound to it. It actually took me a little good while to get into the album. Now, I did like the first couple of singles, you know, and I like Piano Man, and I like, you know, some of the other joints. But, and 
I'm telling y'all, the unreleased joints that Brandy got from this album, in between the recording process of that album, it's a lot of crazy work. So, like, it had a light sound to it, though, the work that her and Rodney did. It wasn't like the tech, not techno, but like the, you know, out of this world type stuff that they was doing, like, on Full Moon, or, you know, some of the stuff they are doing, like, on um, Never Say Never. It was something different about it. It was light, and I thought that was purposely done because of the fact that Brandy was just getting back into the public image again after the whole accident situation. So she was trying to get on the good graces of people and the public and everything. So you want to come out with a safe sound. So that's why I thought it was purposely done. But I didn't know that from Brandy's standpoint, she thinks that Rodney didn't give his all on purpose. So, I mean, it is what it is. We'll talk about the Friday night on FNL Radio so y'all can get more in tune with that. Also, what Chili wants is one of my favorite shows, you know, Missy Elliott on another episode. I tell y'all, she should be the official co-star of the show. You know, keep your name out there. And hopefully this is a sign of that with all this promo with you appearing in all these episodes, maybe this is, you know, maybe that Block Party album is coming soon. So, I'm going to, I'm going to give my, I'm not going to give up hope yet. I slightly give up hope every day, but Missy, I'm waiting, I'm, I'm going to stick it out there with you. Chili, you know, Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather stood her up. Mm. How could you stand up chilling? And then it was so nice, the gift that he got her, too. And this is also the episode that um, he did, the um, charity concert for Justin Timberlake. Uh, that was good, too. You know, see TLC back on the stage, T-Balls, you know, and Chili and everything. So it was so a funny, crazy timing and such, you know, ironic that um, that her show happened to fall on, come on the same night as the day eight years later that Left I had died in an accident, so you know, it was good too. So that was, you know, it was a good thing. Sandra Bullock, I gotta talk about her because it was so funny. I was just last night, I was thinking about, you know, what what's going on with Sandra, you know, and Jesse James? Like, is she finally gonna leave him or what? And I caught on to some friends about it. And this morning, the People magazine image comes out. The cover of the magazine with her, her new adopted baby. Um, let me see what's the name of the baby is. It's Louis something. It's Louis Bardo Bullock, and he was a three and a half month old boy who was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. And she waited till and they actually, you know, got him in January. But she waited till after the war season was over and everything like that to, you know, really let people know that okay, I, I adopted a child. And they waited four years. They started the process four years ago. So they wasn't like this wasn't a whole like quick and give situation like how you see with some of these other celebs who adopt babies. Like, she actually went through the process like every normal person would. So, that's good, too. And he's a he's a black baby. So, so one of my friends were joking on Twitter that it was, like, um, the blind side. But, you know, it's any baby, no matter the race or anything, it's, still, it's good that a baby was adopted, you know, because, you know, it's a lot of kids out here that need to be adopted. So, you know, that's a good look on Sandra's part for, you know, helping out the whole system and everything like that. Also, um... And, um, another thing is, it's finally confirmed, though, that she is going to be divorcing her husband, Jesse James. You know, he's he's the new Tiger Woods right now. You know, he's out there cheating and, you know, everything with the tattooed up ladies and all that good stuff. And then one of the jump balls wrote Sandra a letter through her publicist or her agent or something about, you know, apologizing, trying to get safe face and everything. And it's like... Yo, like, you knew they were married, yet you still cheated on him, and then you want to apologize to the wife? Like, where did you do that at? Like, what part of the script is that, really? So, it, it's a crazy drama, so she is going to divorce, so it's like, now we got to look at Tiger and e, uh, Elon, like, is Elon going to leave Tiger? You know, maybe she's going to follow suit, so we'll see, I mean, we see what Tina knows and Matthew knows, how that whole situation went down, he got another chick pregnant, Tina was not, Tina was quick to get them divorce papers so I mean Tiger and Elon you're the only ones left right now or y'all gonna stick it out or you're gonna get a divorce because of the whole cheating aspect of everything so I mean that's what it is and um also got shout out to Glee G last night's episode of Glee was so good I promise you it it was so good like the yo Kurt had me rolling when he performed that joint um what's the name my mind's going blank right now because I gotta get ready for school so that's my mind my, my, going in different directions and everything, but Kurt did his, <laughs> his performance was crazy, also some of the other performances as well, um, and the, the show, it was like a tearjerker type of episode, like it was trying to tuck at the heartstrings last night, but it was still a good episode and everything, especially when Amber Riley performed, who plays Mercedes, she, um, 
did beautiful at the end, touching it. That, that was really good look. So shout out to her. Also, um, Tanya Toya of course came on last night. So that's all the good shows and everything. The TV rundown, the entertainment news, and all that. So I'm gonna check y'all later in another video real soon. Y'all stay tuned, subscribe, and thank y'all for checking out Doc TV.